Just like From Software's previous games, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice has some hard bosses. Like, really old school Nintendo hard bosses. And we're gonna rank the top five hardest bosses in Sekiro right here, right now. And fair warning, there will be spoilers in this video. Seriously, if you thought the early game bosses were hard, wait till you see the end game ones. Coming in at number five is the Guardian Ape. You fight him after traveling through the sunken valley, and he's sitting in a small pond just chilling. He's got a massive sword stuck in his neck, but that doesn't stop him from beating the ever-loving crap out of you. With crap. I mean, he will literally throw giant pieces of poop at you during the fight. Parrying this all is difficult, but before you know it, you'll decapitate him with a dramatic death blow. But if that was all the Guardian Ape was capable of, he wouldn't be on this list. It isn't long before the giant monkey rises up from the ground, picks up its head and sword, and proceeds to unleash pain upon you. Now he'll be striking you at much longer range with a sword, and he can also create terror that can instantly kill you if the bar fills up. Combined with his huge health bar, the Guardian Ape is a boss that will push your skills to the limit regardless of his form. Next up on our list is the true corrupted monk guarding the entrance to the Fountainhead Palace. Now, you do fight this woman earlier in the game, but she only has one health bar at that point. That's because that version was a fake, and her true form features three health bars that can take a lot of punishment. But you won't be damaging her vitality in her first two forms because the Corrupted Monk blocks nearly everything. You'll struggle to build up her posture meter because her attacks are fast and varied, and she is relentless. You might be able to get an easy death blow or two on her by jumping to the tree branches, but that's not guaranteed. Her illusions are tough to deal with since they can appear behind you, and coupled with the length of her naginata, make her difficult to approach. As a result, the Corrupted Monk easily takes a number four spot. At number three is Owl Father. In the main story, Great Shinobi Owl is a challenging fight that you'll have to conquer if you want the good, or at least not bad, endings. But it's his optional fight at Hinata Estate that makes our list. Why this version? Well, for starters, the number of different combos he can do is staggering. Just try guessing what his next set of attacks will be. Not only that, but he can break your posture meter with just a few hits. And in the second phase of his fight, he can literally turn invisible and unleash an AoE attack on you if you're not prepared. This fight requires patience, and I mean a lot of patience, as you wait for the perfect moment to chip away at his large health bar. Owl Father is a master ninja, and you'll have to use every tool at your disposal if you want to put the old man down for good. A runner-up is an optional boss that appears at the very end of the game, and for good reason. The Demon of Hatred is unlike any other boss in the game, being a massive demon that can light his arena on fire thanks to his lengthy left arm. And boy, does he love to light you on fire. No matter if you're up his crotch or running away, the Demon of Hatred loves to send fireballs, fire waves, and fire skulls at you that will wreck you completely. That is on top of the large hitboxes on his attacks, which will often damage you even if you aren't directly hit. Not to mention this guy has three health bars. And unlike the Corrupted Monk, the Demon of Hatred will take a ton of hits before his posture meter even begins to budge. With each health bar depleted, you'll have to deal with new attacks, most of which either instantly kill you or destroy all but a sliver of your health. The Demon of Hatred stands alone out of all the bosses in Sekiro in design, but would probably be the ultimate challenge for most players if it wasn't for our number one pick. And the hardest boss in Sekiro is none other than the last boss for most of the game's endings, Ishin, the Sword Saint. This is the patriarch of the Ashina clan, brought back to life at the height of his power which means he is the greatest single warrior in the game, bar none. In the middle of a lightning storm in a field of flowers, Ishin proves that he is less a man and more of a force of nature. In his first phase, Ishin can slice the air with a single sword strike, and he varies his attack speeds to catch you off guard. It's hard, but the second phase will make you throw the game, your controller, and your console out the nearest window, because he wields a sword and spear at the same time. Just try to defend or dodge his attacks here because he can attack you from any distance and at speeds that range from stupid fast to blink and you'll miss it. Plus, he will fire a pistol at you if you run away too much. And on top of everything else, he starts shooting lightning in his third and final form. You cannot make a mistake if you want to defeat him. And for that reason, Ishin the Sword Saint easily claims our number one spot.